Well, no, I think that that's the, the, <coughs> the nature of, generally the nature of competition mm. is nothing stands still. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is a cold, smoggy day here in Shanghai, and I'm here with Patrick Riley, uh, with it, who's been leading the charge at Interface uh, Flooring in Shanghai for the last seven years. He's moving back to the States in, in two months, and but before he goes, we've got him for about a half an hour session on his work with Ray, Ray's influence, um, sustainability in general, and then also how to kind of catalyze the next generations of those who are looking at sustainability. So. Thank you very much, Patrick, for your time. We really hope that you enjoy this episode. Okay, um, do me a favor really quickly. Introduce yourself um, and maybe a little bit of your background when it comes to interface and sustainability. Um, right, so I've been in the industry now for almost 35 years, um, commercial flooring uh, and carpeting, um, mainly carpet tiles. Um, I worked for a company that was acquired by Interface in the late 80s. Um, was uh, not around for the start of the company's journey which kicked off really in 94 but was uh, really a reluctant lever so followed the company through that period of the late 90s um, when it developed its mission and then as a result of that and knowing Ray Anderson um, came back in 2001 okay. um, after a stint with another American manufacturer and been now with the company for 16 years. So Ray brought you back? Uh, Ray's influence brought me back. Okay. Uh, what, what was it about Ray's influence then? Um, just generally at that point there were, there were very few people talking about um, the, the need to behave responsibility responsibly in business. Um, before you were working with Ray, before you were exposed to maybe his mission, were you a bin dipper or were you just a normal no, person? No, absolutely not, no. Mm. Um, I, I was just like Ray. Yeah. And, and Ray was always very honest to say um, <coughs> he, he was, uh, what do you call himself, a plunderer of the earth. That, that, that was what you did and it, it, it had no bearing on what you did day to day okay. at all. Um, the rubbish went to the rubbish tip, it went in a landfill, <laughs> that, that was it. Um, you know, you, you bought the biggest car possible. You know, the fact that it did a um, uh, minute number of, uh, of kilometers to a liter of petrol didn't matter. Mm. It, it was just, you know, how, how big an engine could you afford and how comfortable was it and how smooth mm. was it? It was that type of mentality, which out of nobody thinking about what they were doing. So can you tell you kind of like the early days of the interface story, that at least that you knew of? I mean, Ray had this epiphany uh, spear in the chest I think is what he called it uh, one were you there for that and then two what, what were you seeing was transforming Ray if anybody knows Georgia Georgia is just a forest where we come from and so our factory is in the middle of a forest and Ray had always been <coughs> part of that environment locally and suddenly it dawned on him that actually what we were doing commercially was threatening the very environment in which he had grown up in and, and and valued so much and whilst he didn't talk about that much he would talk about that conversation and then once customers started to say about the company well, what are you doing and it very quickly became apparently actually not too much you know, very very little doing the minimum amount possible is what we were doing um, for as we were forced by law and, and that was the piece that, that really got at it, mm -hmm. is actually we're doing nothing. And, and it's clear that you know, whether you believe the science or not, just looking at the actions that we're taking are, are impacting the environment around us. Can you talk about, what is a 2020? I mean, it, you've moved on since, but what was the original 2020 mission? That was simply is to, uh, in the course of our business, um, actually have, a, have no negative impact on the environment. Okay. Zero negative impact. So there were, five of them are, are about our activity, you know, benign emissions, um, uh, new, carbon neutral transport, um, recycled material, 
reduce reduced energy and reduce water mm. that's fine and, and eliminate the use of water in the process and was in the hard years was it ray that drove you was it data that was driving what what was the driving factor and what was the role of ray um ray was always the the figurehead and the became the conscience of the company and with him and a few people around it and that was why the way <coughs> that that the ambassadors if that was not always the word that was used but by creating that ambassador type mentality in the business that's the way that worked um, he was extremely charismatic um, and uh, would foster that type of um, behaviour with people around him, and it and it was able to trickle down, and then slowly but surely we got more people that would go external and talk about it. Mm. Um, so how do you kind of align yourself to this? Because are you thinking a fifteen-year trajectory for your career in the company? Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the challenges. Like, you know, you have these visionaries who, like, for Ray, he, yes, it was a public company, but he owned probably the vast majority of the stock, so he has the luxury of thinking yes. long term. But how do you, as a senior manager, kind uh, of align uh, to that and line up behind it and say, "I'm committed to that mission too"? I would say it is really difficult to be anywhere ab above a, a, a junior manager in our company without really believe in in that part of the business culture mm -hmm. um, because you're just asked to do so many expected to do so many things that are in line with that talk about it talk you know just be engaged in it you can't you can't do that mm -hmm. and so the, the people that <coughs> do not get it in the same way tend not to last that long you know, because that they, they get found <coughs> out and then they're just totally at odds with with what we're doing. After 23 years, this is hugely positive to the hiring process. Mm. Whereas 20 years ago, or well, probably 15 years ago, it, it gave us a big list of environmental enthusiasts, tree huggers, to, who wanted to come and work for us and be associated with us. Mm. Now, it, it brings us really good quality, high quality talent in in pretty much every walk of life. Now, does the culture of sustainability play well in Asia for your employees? Like, is that, and maybe talk a little bit about like when you first came here, seven eight years ago, yeah. versus now. Like, when you first came in, was sustainability something that your oh, employees sure talked? About? Okay, um, I, I insisted that every visit we got to the plant for every major piece of business, we are going to have the sustainability conversation, regardless. So. Um, the, there were a lot of those conversations, but practically all of them with local local companies or often with senior local managers of multinational companies as well, were very short. You know, 10 second conversations were pretty typical. But we plugged away at that. So every single one, we do one. And, you know, I'd have to say now that typically, even with the most skeptical Chinese customer, mm as a minimum they understand that they need to understand this so what's different i mean you're not just an ambassador for sustainability in your office and for interface you're also kind of like the western face of sustainability and that's that's something that hasn't really played well here so how has that changed i mean you come in with a very western approach but you've kind of said the last two years it localized and how you did it so uh, I, I were there some key areas yeah no i think that when you say that doesn't play well, mm. I think the the reason it doesn't play well is often it comes across as preaching. Mm. You should do this. Mm -hmm. Where <coughs> what I've tried r really, really hard to do, and I think we've been successful, is, is turning it around and saying, well, this is what the company does over there. What can we do here mm -hmm. within... The, the resources and the facility that Interface have got here. And, and that way you you can really engage both your own staff 
and also when you go out to talk to other people it's a little bit about yeah this is what we do globally but actually guys this is what we're really doing on the streets here in China and how we're impacting change here True. then I don't think you have any problem at all connecting it to local people the only challenge is finding for me if you want if there were three pieces of information you wanted every Western executive to understand about China what would they be then Oh God! Like really? if you could just hammer out the three. China needed to get out of poverty quickly, um, and it's done that, mm. and, it, and it's now largely in charge of its own destiny. Mm. It is not a developing world country anymore. It's in charge of its own destiny, um, and has the ability to fix problems in a way that we can only dream of in the West. Yeah. If I was given a youngster some advice, learn Chinese. Um, you and, and until you learn the language and understand a bit about the history of the country, mm -hmm. then you you can't really understand what goes on here. So, what about the millennials then? Full of hope? Are they different? You think they'll take this on? The big question is, will it happen fast enough? Mm -hmm. okay. So, we we have to, and Ray recognised this. We have to change the way we think about and define success and and commercial success mm. and we can't go on using more and more new stuff that just comes out of the ground we, we, we have to reuse what we've already got we have to dispose of it sensibly um, build buildings that last for 200 years not 20 because mm. you can't afford to rip them down yeah. Yeah, you, and, and which they're very good at in China re yeah, repurpose old buildings which we're not very good in China right um, because uh, often not the building in the first place just did not have a life of longer than 30 years mm. it was built to be torn down yeah. and, and strangely the West profited by that over a 40 year period exporting all this low value add and dirty activity to China mm. um, and then that actually most of the West did not see, did not generate any benefit in terms of environmental footprint mm. back home. Exported all the dirty stuff and still carried on increasing their environmental sure. negativity of the environmental sure. footprint. So, you know, this different stuff goes on there. Yeah.